everybody, welcome to this fifth tutorial in our course on urban urban management with remote sensing. So today we're going to work with, well this morning we're going to work with uh, corona imagery and look a little bit at how we might go about classifying them with a more advanced method than what we've seen before called object-oriented classification. So first what I've done is I've downloaded a corona image for the southern edge of Kanpur and I've georeferenced using the methods we've seen in the first tutorial. Now this is actually just a quarter of a corona image. Uh, the actual geographification of these images could be the subject of a whole day of training in itself. So I've skipped this step. And if you're interested, we can point you to some literature. I've actually done an approximate georeferencing of this myself manually. So you can see Kanpur is here. The main city is here. Um, IIT is here. You can see the IIT airstrip right here. Uh, but actually here, this is the southern side of the city. And what you can see here is actually the main airport in Kanpur. So if I zoom into this section here, and we can look a bit more closely at this image. So <clears throat> first of all, you'll notice that Corona images are extremely large. They are high density and they have a lot of pixels. Right now, you can obviously see that the radiometric quality of these images is quite limited. So we can see um, Ganga is quite clear, very, very sediment laid and very gray. And we can see the bits of Kanpur that have been building. We actually see a lot of farmers' fields. Um, we can see roads. We can, of course, see the airport. That's nice. And that's what I use for the georeferencing. Now, what we're going to do today is look at a method we're going to look we're going to introduce the concept of object oriented classification and we're going to impl implement a simplified method of object oriented classification that is quite easy and that of course works on grass gis so it doesn't require any expensive software either um, so if we just look closely at the problem at hand now here i've zoomed in more or less into the area we're going to work now, because Corona image imagery only has one band, it is only grayscale, we actually have a limited amount of information to make our decisions upon. So we cannot use any aspect of color or multispectral processing to make these decisions. Now, if we look, certainly the geometry of objects is helpful. We can see that you know these small patches here are little farmer's fields. Of course, roads and runways are clear. This Looks like a denser type, greener type of vegetation, which would be darker. These are probably grasses somewhere in the middle in terms of color. Um, and if we zoom in even more, we can actually see the shapes of individual buildings that have been built to serve as the airport, right? You can see a road going out here. So. We have a limited amount of information. And the other thing that we notice is that there is quite a bit of speckle in this imagery, right? If I zoom in, if I zoom in on these fields, we can see that man, there's quite a bit of variation in the colors. So these are, in fact, very, very difficult images to classify. Now, we're going to have to use the geometry more than you would in normal unsupervised or normal supervised classification. Meaning that we really are going to have to try to detect the shape of these objects, lines. Now it would, because there's squares, there's rectangles, semicircles, it'd be very difficult to devise a method that actually detects shapes specifically. But there is something that's a bit more established and that is called image segmentation. So what I'm going to do now, I've created this image. Is, image segmentation, again, is a fairly onerous process. And I'm going to load a crop. So this is a crop of the image that we're looking at. Right, exactly overlays. I'm going to get rid of the large image just to keep things neat. Remove, yes. I'm going to resume the screen on this crop. The zoom to layer, always useful. So there is a, the cropped image that we are going to be working with today. Now, what I'm going to show you now is the basis, really, of object or I mean, a lot of 
a lot is made of object-oriented classification, and of course there are some very expensive pieces of software, and I mean something like 10 lakh rupees, so it's not cheap software, but the fundamental idea behind object-oriented classification, the, the, the name object-oriented means a classification where we're going to try to see individual items in the image. So for example, the classic example is all these little individual fields we would want them to be distinct. Now, in a normal classification, all the fields with the same color would come out in the same class. In an object-oriented classification, we would actually want, for example, here one, two, three fields, I would want three classes. Again, here similar one, two, three, all these little fields, we would want them as separate as possible. So the fundamental process that allows this is something called segmentation. Now, there is integrated into QGIS, there's a grass tool, we're going to use it in a minute, we're going to go to grass in a second, but for now I just want to show you the principle of segmentation. So this is, at, you'll recognize it's a grass tool. The integration between grass and QGIS is really quite good. So we're just going to put that raster in there, I'm going to increase this threshold to 0.75, this is a value that you need to experiment with. The minimum number of cells in a segment, that means the minimum number of pixels, the size of a segment. I don't want that to be one. I don't want it to identify individual pixels as an object. I'm going to say 100, basically meaning a 10 by 10 object minimum. It could actually probably be a bit more than that. So I'm just going to run this for now, right? Now, depending on your computer, this might take a moment or two. The reason I selected such a cropped, small image really is to keep the processing times to a workable amount, given that we have um, a tutorial where we have to try to get through most of this in an hour and a half. So the process of object-oriented classification always starts with segmentation. And that is the first thing that we're going to examine uh, and once we've done this, uh, I'm going to show you the image, and we're going to go then into grass to do the process a bit more formally. So I'll come back once the process is finished. Okay, the process is computed, and what you see here really is a segmented raster. Now, if I compare to the background image, right, we certainly see, now this is a level of separation which isn't bad. Um, what it's done, we can see separate objects for patches of field. So it's not quite as separated as I would have liked, but it isn't bad. Um, we can certainly see, for example, this patch of fields here, which has got a composition of light-colored fields abutting some darker fields. That's clearly come out separated. The paths have come out split. The Some of these building complexes, the roads, they're all reasonably separated. Now, this is a process that always requires a bit of fine-tuning. So the idea is going to be to use this process in grass to try to get some objects well-defined and then what we're going to do is in contrast with supervised classification where the only criteria that determines what class a pixels belong to is really its radiance values, its brightness values. Right? Supervised classification works on the pixels brightness values, irrespective of where the pixel is located. Now, with the addition of the segmentation step, we're going to be able to tell the computer, well, actually, this patch here in the middle, irrespective of whether or not it is similar in color to this patch here just next to it, keep it as a separate class. So that's the power of object-oriented classification. And actually, we could refine this. We could make more similar objects separable um, with that difference parameter, and we can actually get to a point where we can segment smaller and smaller objects. And of course, the idea there is you could segment buildings if you have sufficient resolution. So we are now, I'm now going to start the recording and I'm going to start up GrassGIS and we're going to look at this process a little bit more formally. Okay, here we are back in Grass. Um, you should be a bit more familiar with the process, but let's go ahead and create a new workspace. For this, I'm going to get new and I'm going to call this Conpor OBIA. OBIA stands for Object Based Image Analysis. Okay, next. 
Uh, let's just go ahead and select this EPSG code manually. I'll remember 32644. Next, yes, finish. Uh, let's not define the region. We'll do that in an instant. Let's just go K O B I A for the map set. Okay, and we start grass. Right. Rearrange our windows a bit. Okay, now the first step is going to be to import that raster. So I've prepared that little cropped file that we can use. And Channel 4 corn crop. It's a tiny file. Import should import in very brief space of time. There we go. Okay. That's all we need. Now we are going to set our grass region according to this image. Set region to match raster maps. Campbell curl crop run. Here we go. Okay. So now our first step in classification is actually going to be something new so i mentioned that this only has one band normally in classification we need a multi-spectral data set or at least a color data set so three bands we only have one we are going to create new bands from this and what we're going to use is something called image texture if you look at the image you can see that the level of smoothness of the image does give you an indication of the land use type. So for example, the roads are smoother than the agricultural fields. If you zoom in, right? So you can see there's a bit more speckle, not much on the fields, especially the dark ones, especially this vegetation is actually very dark. And very speckled because you can see that within the vegetation there are light points but also dark ones so that means that something called image texture is going to be a good metric so we're first going to go and create texture maps now i do believe that the texture is We'll be terrain analysis. Okay, well, so yeah, well, indeed, we have we, statistics. There we are. We are going to use statistics in a moment. So the texture, we're actually going to go ahead and use the console. So if you click on the console mouse here, you can simply type r. Dot. See, it appears. It appears here at the bottom. So you type, you can actually go there. Enter. So we're going to generate textural features for this image. So we're going to use a process called co-occurrence that is going to allow us to estimate how smooth the neighborhood of a pixel is. So name we have to give a name for the output of base map. So let's just call it K-O-B-I-A. Now in the options now we need to choose the textures that we want. We don't want to calculate all textual measurement. That's going to be too much. The size of the moving window, this is actually the size of the sample. Now, this is variable. Let's try 11 by 11. So this means 11 by 11 by default. And in terms of the texture methods that we're going to try, experiment is this is called entropy. So you can read up on this textual entropy. And this is MOC1. There is a Wikipedia in entry on this. So uh, that we can now run this. Texture calculations can be a bit long. Uh, even though we've got a small 500 kilobyte image, you'll notice that it is taking a while. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video and I'm going to wait till it finishes and I'll be back. Right, here we are. My computation is finished. 
I have actually exported these rasters and I have them in the class if your computer is too slow and just doesn't get done. So let's have a look at them now. In case it doesn't display automatically in QGIS, there's a command called d for display dot rast, d dot raster. And we have that twice and we get the usual menu. So let's look at the entropy raster of our texture value. Right. See, that's interesting, isn't it? So what have we got? We have got high entropies for these field areas, which were very smooth, and lower entropies. Entropy is kind of like a thermodynamics concept. So this has already helped us in the distinction. It's good. Let's have a look at the other one. So again, d.rast. And I'm going to look at the MOC, the moment texture. Again, this is quite detailed, isn't it? So you can see that these are like additional spectral layers. See, each field has a boundary now, which is very well defined, and that will help our classification process. So now what we need to do is group these images, first of all. Um, that's one thing we can do. So let's create our group. So imagery, develop images and group, create a group. So we're going to create a group called, let's call it um, K for count for group. Going to add some data to that. Let's add, let's add the whole thing. No, actually, let's not add the raw image. Now you need to create the subgroup. Okay, yes. Again, K group, select all, apply, and here we have an image group. Okay, now that's done. The other thing we need to do now is the actual segmentation. So let's go back to the display of the raw image. So d.rast, let's display our actual corona image, corona crop. Okay, here we are. Let's improve the zoom a bit. There we go. So we need to segment all these separate fields as per the demo I gave you in QGIS. So again, this is a type of quicker with the command line. So you just go to this lower part here, put the mouse cursor there, type I dot segment. It appears, if it appears in a menu like this, you know you're on the right track because you know the command exists. And enter usually twice, once or twice. Okay. Imagery group. Ah, see, I have made a mistake there. Close. We're actually going to create a group for the for only the low the only the image itself. So let's call that K K core for Corona. Add data. Just this one. Okay, core for Corona, select all. Okay, now let's do the segment again. Okay, so now we're going to segment the actual Corona image. So, K okay, core Corona. Name output raster map. K okay, core Corona underscore segment. Different thresholds, go for 0 0.6. Settings, region growing, let's use the eight neighbors. Minimum number of cells, let's still go for 100. I think that was reasonable. Right, and we shall run that. So the GrassGIS display is a bit more explicit than the QGIS. It is the same program. But now we see all the multiple iterations that it is doing. We asked it for 20, so it does need to get up there, but it accelerates. So now what it's doing, again, it's going to try to find separate objects in the image. And that is what we're going to work with in order, in order to establish a classification which is based on these objects. So really, this is just a different approach to classification which has a more geometric focus.
focus. Seven. Right, there we go. The results are prettier actually in QJS, so now we can close this. So this is the classification, preliminary classification. This is in itself a, a form of classification, except that for all we know, multiple objects, I think multiple objects in this object, in this, uh, sorry, in this image could be the same. So this could be the same class as this green one. Now what we need to determine is whether or not there are objects of a multiple class. It's kind of like the merge classification of the object step and the supervised step if you've done a lot of supervised classification. So, but this is our starting point, right? These are the objects that we're going to analyze in our classification. Okay. Okay. Now what we want to do is we actually want to create a vector out of these objects. We want to use the contours of these segments to be able to extract information from the rest of the data. So for that, there is a raster command, type conversions. So we're going to take this raster and we're going to turn it into a vector. So R to vect. Now, raster map, K core segment. Yeah, it's fine. Name for the output vector map. Course segment vector output feature type is going to be areas because we want enclosed spaces attribute no we do not need any of these at the moment should be reasonably quick right and there you go so there is our vector map of all the objects that were in our classification Right now, we're going to do a tiny little maintenance bit. Just because we have a fairly complex vector map, we're going to do a little bit of a cleanup operation uh, and we're going to build the topology to help in the maintenance. So, again, yes, it's our K segment vet. Right, and we can just build the topology, use the default, and that'll prevent bugs. As I think in this case with a, such a small image it actually isn't a problem. We don't need this step, but if you're going to work with a larger image then you do need this step. Okay. Okay, now. Now we start to mix the, the vector and the raster data. What we need to do is use these vectors as a bit of a cookie cutter to cut some dough. So, we're going to try to extract information from the other data layers and gets, for example, medians for each vector. Okay, so how we're going to do this, we're going to use a command called v.raster.stats. Right. What this command does is it gets raster statistics. And what it bases these calculations on is a portion of the raster, which is determined by a vector map. So it's quite interesting. So vector map, of course, we're going to pull up our segmentation vectors. Now we're going to have to do this more than once. Now the first time, let's go fetch our, let's go fetch our corona. First thing, first things first. Let's go get the raw image, so the corona crop. Uh, column prefix for attribute table let's just put a k capital k now options we need to choose the options we don't need all these statistics right so you could experiment there's actually quite a few options minimum maximum variation range quartile in this first instance we're going to do something simple and we're just going to go with the median which is, I'm actually selecting the median because the median is a value which is not affected by noise, by salt and pepper speckle, which is characteristic of Corona. So certainly the median is better than the average. Right, and we're gonna do this the first time. Um, 
right at the column prefix. That's fine. Run. There we go. Okay, now we need to run it a few more times. So name of vector map stays the same. Um, so this one, now we're going to change. We're going to go to the entropy. Going to change this column prefix to E. Put it inside the median again, and we're going to run it. There we go. And finally, we're going to go select our moment of occurrence. We'll see one. Change the column prefix to capital M. And we are going to run that. Okay, that's all there is to it. Okay, so now we have a vector with some attributes which gives some statistics relating to image properties of each of these objects. So we've got the entropy of the object, we've got the moment of occurrence of the object, the MOC1, we've also got the median color of the object. So basically what we've done is we've taken the blocks in this image and we've summarized their properties according to their geometric area. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take that raster, the vector, sorry, and we're going to re-rasterize it. So if I display the vector, we can do d.vect, right? And we can name our vector map like so. Okay, and here we are. So I've displayed the vector. So we're basically, we want to re-transform this vector into a raster, but the value of the raster, we want that to fit with these attributes that we've just calculated. So here we're going to go into we're going to re-rasterize the vector. So vector, map type com components, vector to raster. Right, so now, uh, the name of the input vector map is this one, so that's the one. Name of the output raster map. So let's call this, so let's see, corona. And that, so I'm going to go access the values of the corona image. Source of the raster value, I want attributes. So I want the attribute values that are stored for this vector object to become a raster. Now in the attributes, right, selection, that's fine. Um, we could actually not select points and boundaries, that's fine. The attribute here, here's important, right, if I pull down, these are all the values. So k-median, that is the median value of the raw image that I selected. So I'm going to select that. All right, that's the first one I'm going to do. Run. See, there we go. Now, what we see here is, of course, a colorized version, but really, these are the median values of each object. So if basically, I've simplified the corona image, cut throughout some of the noise. So that's one band. We're going to create kind of a false color composite, if you will, to get at some classes. Now, I don't have to close this dialog. I can use it again. So. Name of the output, we're going to go for E, which is going to be the entropy image. It's still going to be raster, but of course, in the attributes here, I'm going to select entropy. And I'm going to run that. Ah, I've already done this as a practice, so yeah, optional. Allow outputs to overwrite. That was a minor bug. So now that's done. Uh, we can have a look at it. One. Right, so some broad classes, perhaps not extremely, not such a high discriminant power, but there's three at least that are clear, so this does help a bit. Now let's go back to our, our vector rasterization process. So now we're going to change, we're going to call this the M for the moment image, and in the attributes, I'm going to go to M median, uh, just in case. Right, see this one is actually quite good. The MOSA, there's multiple objects that are quite distinct in here. 
Right, and now we're going to create another image group with these new classes, these new objects, imagery. Let's develop a new image group. So we're going to call this is a segmented image. Segmentation image, it's a fairly new concept. We're going to add, now what are we going to add? I want the coordinate raw value. The image, the image. Okay. Now we need to make a subgroup. Yes, yes. Select all. Apply. Okay. Now at this point, really, we are all we need to do is assign some class numbers, and the problem becomes the exact same problem of supervised classification or unsupervised. So we can just go ahead, see what happens. We can run, we can run a clustering input for an unsupervised classification, image regroup, the segment image. All right, so. This one because this is our first output. Run. Uh, so let's see classes. What shall we say? Now here, th this is, of course, an unsupervised classification. Um, I would say about five. And then imagery. Maximum likelihood. Right, here is our final object-based, be it unsupervised, but it is still an object-based classification with different types of objects, different types of fields, different densities of vegetation, buildings. See, in this case, there was a problem that the buildings are confused. Some buildings are confused with the field. This is a typical problem with corona imagery in that there's not enough image quality to distinguish these objects. Now, we could have experimented more, we could have partitioned these fields, um, we could have experimented with other texture metrics, but it does show that corona imagery is very hard to classify. Um, as an experiment, right, let's just try to classify the raw image. So we're going to run. Let's just see if now uh, the raw corona is here. So now that's going to be un. On super mm. see the problem unsupervised classification of the raw would not even have worked because it needs at least two bands so we can try something however so what we can try we can create we can create a group with yeah, that's an interesting idea. So let's create a group. Call it an experimental group, right? Now I'm going to add the raw image with the raw entropy and the raw texture. So these have no segments. So this is really much in, in the role of ordinary classification without segmentation. Right, subgroups, yes. Now, uh, let's go classify. We need cluster. Let's see if we can unsupervise classify our experiment. So, unsuper two. Let's say, let's say four classes make it a bit easier for the algorithm. It's very fast imagery classify our maximum likelihood experimental imagery group imagery subgroup 
containing signature on super2 on super2 it's all fine so this is what we get with unsupervised classification with the texture metrics so it's we have more error because we have more stray pixels here which would need manual editing like fields road so we've preserved some of the resolution it's less thematic um so there are pros and cons the 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 object boundaries are fuzzier in because you've got these boundary pixels that have run um so it kind of depends it does depend on what you need for larger scale applications if you're so for example if you're trying to monitor urban heat islands these stray pixels will actually lead to a lot of man hour consumptions to correct them because they would lead to error in the model the object-based oriented classification is slightly less error prone i mean certainly one of the things certainly this is better because if we'd only if we we had run a a raw object-based classification with just one band which is mathematically possible but just very un unadvisable um, the results would be even worse so certainly the texture values have contributed something so you'll see OBIA is an extremely wide area. Um, there's a lot of work, there's a lot of experimentation that can be done, and there's no universal solution. So you constantly have to redevelop the method for each problem that you're analyzing. So I hope this has helped. Um, next tutorial, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be on uh, drone photogrammetry. So we'll see you then.